because God has allowed us to step into this arena this arena of this teaching it simply means certain people appointed to die you will no longer die I speak over the souls everyone under your roof everyone associated with you your loved ones the people that are under your protection your children your wife your husband your brothers and your sisters everybody I stand as an apostle of Jesus and I decree I release the overflowing scourge now by the finished work of Christ you will live and not die in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I bring you life I bring you life I bring you life get back to the can to Zalea get back to Shkita Zota get back to the Lika Brisu and you have to get back to the Balatese I said get back to the Balatese he can't take it back. Bread can't take it. Susu talada. The kekan to take it. Are you can't bread the Susu katala balade. I said can't take it balada. The devil has no right to kill you. The devil has lost the power to open the grave for you to enter. I am now the person who has the keys of grave and the keys of death. And remember, anything Jesus receives, he receives on our behalf. Which means, like Paul, you can decide this journey I am going. I will return. Thank you, Father. We celebrate you, Father. We celebrate you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. Forever you are eternal, powerful. You are glorious. Manifesting your nature and your work in us and in this hour through us that all those that would touch God, all those that will come near to God, would touch us you are helping us to express your glory and your power in our generation you are causing us to reflect everything that you are and everything that you have being reflected through us to our generation thank you father as you count us worthy of this honor we celebrate you in Jesus precious name give Jesus a big big hand hallelujah amen please get seated hallelujah hallelujah amen, amen. we celebrate Jesus for the opportunity he keeps giving to us to gather together and to hear from him I believe that God has done so much and um, it's important that we keep entering into all that he has done in order not for everything that he has accomplished on the cross and beyond the cross so that all of those things will find their expression one thing is for one someone to get something done it's another for the benefit of that thing to be seen praise the lord somebody can will to you so much money will two cars three houses an estate and it is done and is dead and is gone it's another thing for you to actually take delivery of all of those things and it's not if it's never known if you have never been aware that that was done um, it is the truth that it is done but it is not true that you are enjoying those things and so i'm thinking that this series will help us to enter into the enjoyment of all of those things i have come that you might have life Amplified says that you may enjoy life. That's what he says. 
I have come that ye might have life, enjoy life, and enjoy it to the fullest. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, last Saturday, we began the series and we said, um, people must, every believer has to understand what happened at the point of salvation and um, until we and we begin to see and understand what actually happened is difficult to experience the full benefit that's why you find people who are believers and yet they are still not able to cross and go beyond certain experiences and it puts a question mark on the veracity of what they have gotten and sometimes they begin to blame the church or blame the place of worship and all of that happens that's because there isn't any understanding so much just like as i said today at the minister's meeting we had a few hours ago and i was talking i said you know a church asked that we do some work with them you know as far as creating a basic structure of Christ, you know, the knowledge of Christ in this, in their leadership. And the man was saying that somebody had a message he preached and he didn't believe in that message. Um, um, he's a strong pastor, he's a leading pastor, but he doesn't believe in that message that another pastor came to give and he's so happy about saying he doesn't believe and what he's saying doesn't believe is the truth so i just knew that we have a problem in the body of christ amen and that problem before jesus comes will be solved amen, amen. amen. praise the lord and we want to see the power that the apostles saw but god has gone beyond that level of power the power the apostles saw is little nothing compared to the power that is about to be revealed in the last days of this church i'm trusting god that understanding the basic structures of of the life of god would make that possible in the name of jesus now we said last saturday that um when a man becomes a christian he's baptized into christ is that true now he doesn't baptize himself nobody baptizes himself he's baptized into so it's the work of another person that's why it takes a man to baptize somebody else. Yes. Jesus stood by the waters and John was about to baptize him and he said, no, I, you can't do this. I can't do this. You, this person coming after me is mightier than I. Whose son does? I'm unworthy to untie. I can't baptize you. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. Is that okay for now? Is that okay? Just do what you are told to do. Because I cannot baptize myself. You have to baptize. I must be baptized. And it's a demonstration of what he is coming to do for the church. Is that okay? And so that was how he was baptized. And the Bible says as soon as he was baptized. And as he was coming out of the water. Significantly. The Bible says the heavens opened. And that heaven has never been closed. There was nowhere we saw and the heavens closed. Is that okay? So there is no service called open heaven. Amen. That's, that heaven has not been closed. Way. They say, where, where do we go to? This door, there's no door leading to anywhere here. It's locked. So, so they sat down. And they were the only ones who saw life. Everybody heard Christ. Only those who entered stayed and stayed that enjoyed life. It will be life to the fullest. It will be life to the fullest. It will be life to the fullest. And the mystery of spiritual things is that what you didn't see, you cannot touch. Even if it is true. It's a law. That is why there is teaching. Even occult is the teach. Because it's a spiritual law. You must understand something to eat it. You don't just hear something and, and eat it. No, you must understand it. 
If you see a card seminars, very rich seminars, three days, four days, as demonic as they are, they still teach. And you see people seated in the seminars, waiting. They go from stage to stage. Great message. They all do teachings. Is it not true? Yes. All of them are teaching. Yeah. Everybody is teaching because spiritual law says it. You see Amok books. Amok. You know Amok? Yeah. Books everywhere. Seminars going on. Satan's church of Satan. Teachings are going on. Yeah. It's in Lagos. People are members. And, they go, and because you don't eat what you have not understood, you cannot celebrate what you have not touched. What is in Christ? Please picture Christ. First of all, picture Christ properly. You say Christ is all in all. Is that okay? You know what that means? It means that Christ cannot be defined by a single definition. He is God. Okay. He is also Son of God. It's a mystery. Uh -huh. He is Son of Man. Is that okay? He is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is there. How can you be in there and still see outside? You are not here. You are somewhere else thinking you are here. <laughs> God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The place that is in Christ is a place where God also lives. God was in Christ. It's a mysterious matter. So it's not just a place where you enter. That's where God is. So I go to prepare a place for you. That wherever I am, there you may be also. This is the place that is called in Christ. We'll be opening it up gradually from tonight. This place, how is it like? Is it a house? Is it a... Is it, a mansion, is it air? What is it like? I'm trusting God that as I'm talking, the Holy Ghost will be explaining to you at the level you can take it. Is that okay? And the reason is this, that as you hear this, you will become ambassadors of the same thing when you go. It is no use hearing these things and keep them to yourself. Because the church is to express Christ. Is that okay? You know Christ, express him. You know him, you express him outside. You keep, no, you keep expressing him. Because God has, Jesus has no other body outside of your, you as the body. So it's, you are the only person that Christ has as his, to express who he is. So this house, we help to, for you to understand who Christ is. So when you go out of this door, you begin to express what you have seen. Talk to people about it. That's why it's important that we speak to people about the experiences that are in Christ because that's your fruitfulness. That's what they call being fruitful. Being fruitful. That's the real fruitfulness. Not just calling people to into church. It is making people know what you know. Join them with Christ. Paul was saying in Colossians 1 verse 28, say, for this I walk with superhuman energy and I want everybody to be, so that they'll be made perfect in Christ. That was his whole assignment. He shouts, he was in prison, he was still writing. Superhuman energy, just to ensure people are made perfect in Christ. That's the real work of ministry. To bring sense to perfection. Is it not true? That's why he gave them those gifts. Not just to make souls. No. Perfect saints. No work is complete until the saint is perfect in Christ, is matured in Christ. The work has not ended. Those are the seeds that fell by the wayside and the enemy came to remove them. You bring souls to church and leave them the way they are, they will plant, they will remove them. And the best of the air came and they removed them from the place where you planted them. Is it not true? That's like the man who went to sow seed by the wayside. Is that not true? They have no earth. 
So the best of the air, which are the foul spirits and the devils, remove them from where they are because they were never planted in the first place. They were never planted in Christ in the first place. Come on, say I hear. Yes. Oh yes, so it's, and there are churches everywhere. People who got who is painful. People that pray that prayer, they are in churches at their deacons today. But they were never planted in Christ. They are the ones that has access to. Why are you inside the church? Because church cannot save you. It is not church that is our defense. Christ is our defense. You can enter into a church and never be in Christ. Hallelujah. So the best of the earth had access to those ones. They have no access to your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Number one. Let's just read the lead scripture. Ephesians 1. I need uh, an amplified Bible. Hallelujah. Love our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. These heavenly places are in the sky. Where are they? They are in Christ. Is that true? Where are the heavenly places? In Christ. In my father's house are... And the mansions there mean dwelling places. <laughs> so it's consistent with this scripture. You never say heavenly place. You see places. Dwelling places. And these dwelling places are in Christ. Can I have amplified? Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now he says in the amplified, May blessings, praise, laudation, and eulogy to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual given by the Holy Spirit blessing in the heavenly realm. Is that okay? Praise the Lord. He's talking about a realm. Come on, say a realm. Yeah. So, Christ is a realm. Just like somebody moves from, you see, people talk about, the, you know, people like slogans, they don't know the meaning of slogans. You know, from glory to glory. Not from, not, from, not from suffering to glory. Not from shame to glory. The believer does not go from shame to, to glory. No, 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 no. It's from one level of glory to another level of glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They are talking about realms in the spirit. Lord, like all these occult powers and operations, they understand these things more than the church does. You see, in the great message, for, for instance, if you are a member of the great message, you get into a class. With more study, you move to the next realm. Then you get to the next realm, and then you go to the other realm. And then there's a realm that really call you, where they call it, the person cross bearer. You see the person inside wearing cross. You have seen some people like that, white cross and then white clothes. Many of those people do not struggle with sin the way church does. I met a professor who is a grail messenger, a cross bearer. He was a vice chancellor in one of the universities here in, in Nigeria. He kept talking to the pastor, your people, what your people are saying, they will need every fasting and Holy Ghost to do. We already did at our first level. Yes. You won't find a cross bearer lying. He doesn't struggle not to lie. He just cannot lie. The things that church is preaching with all power, all the anointing in this world is preaching on one thing. Sin, sin, sin. Grail message dealt with that at first level. It's not an issue for them at all. They don't need God to even overcome it. So he's laughing at us. Say, look at you people. That's not what we are dealing with. We are dealing with more powerful forces. It's not lie or not lie. Oh, this is, this is, this is this. hey, preach. You must not do this. You must not do that. You must, ah, ah, is that your subject matter in church for 30 years? Growth? No realms. 
You just keep saying the same thing. So everybody in the church keeps keep, keep doing the same thing. The people are also hearing this. They say, let's go talk now. Let's hear me go go. So there isn't really development. And he was laughing. I was ashamed. Just like a TV program that I watched. Is that okay? It's not in your system. You are not, you don't understand any other life. A royal blood does not understand suffering. All the money in the government is used to keep their royal houses. They keep them, they pay all of the princes. They don't know suffering, they don't know pain, they don't know nothing. They just grow and grow and spend money. You should see them. Big, big hotels, big, big cars. There's another word they don't know. They don't know. That's why they give up money like nonsense. Because they don't know. They are not aware of suffering. They are, they are not conscious of how people suffer. They are not be to, allowed to see it. They, are not, they, they have no consciousness of another word. So, choosing to be holy in Christ also means you are not, you are not conscious of the other life. That's why a church that is true church does not talk about sin in the church. Because that's not part of your constitution. It's not part of you. You only discuss righteousness. Is that okay? Because that's what you have inherited. There's a diff the perspectives are, the same, are different. Even for the same situation. You say the same thing, but one is very positive, one is negative. This one is the glass says it's half empty. That's negative. The one says it's half full. It's positive. So you have a church as a pastor. What does it mean? Discuss how they are chosen. How they should live as chosen people. Yes, Discuss who they resemble. Discuss who the house is. What the house is. Discuss who their father is like. Discuss the virtues of him that has called them out of darkness. Discuss the royalty of Jesus. Discuss the glory of Jesus. Discuss the righteousness of Jesus. Discuss the holiness of Jesus. People in this family, this is how they are. That's who you are. Don't tell them that's what you must pray to be. No, tell them that is who they are. You are holy. By default. Choosing to be holy and blameless. Blameless means no chargeable offense. Yes. Yes. There's no offense they can charge you for. You inherited it. It's something that you was born in you. It's not something you are going to try to be. If you keep telling somebody like this for one month, two months, three months, there's no other thing he knows outside what you have been saying. He grows into it by himself. He just grows into it. Before you know it, he can't lie. Before you know it, he can't misbehave. You say, "Why? It's not part of us. We are not part of. It's not. It's not part of us." But if tell somebody, "Hey, don't do this." Don't say, "What is that?" In the day, say, "We should not do." <laughs> Amen. Because you don't. So. It is what is in the house that you are talking about. Praise the Lord. Come to the choosing in Him to be holy and be blameless in Him. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Now He says, we should be wholly consecrated and set apart for him and blameless in his sight, above reproach, before him in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is number one. Come on, say that's number one. Now, in Christ, the next verse says, in Christ, you are adopted as a son. Adoption means, you know, adoption naturally in the ordinary terms means somebody has no children. He will go into uh, maybe like um, an orphanage and pick a child and then bring the child to his house and then he becomes his, his child officially. Praise the Lord. Now, 
from two perspectives, adoption here is a powerful thing that God is talking about. That once you come into Christ, he adopts you straight. You see, the person you adopt, you don't know the parents. Is that okay? You don't know the background. You just pick the child. Come, live in my house. You have changed the person's life entirely. The person has changed com completely. He was eating maybe biscuits and bread that people brought for them, but now he's eating on the table with golden spoon and golden plates. And then he now is part of your home. He is now a son that can inherit what you have. You have relocated this child to your house. There he was not anything, but here he is somebody. There he was not known, but here he is known. There he had no helper, nobody particularly was for him. But here the whole wealth and your power you wield as a man is in his favor. Come say adopted. What God says is that once you come into Christ, you have become adopted. That means your parentage doesn't matter. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter who your father was, who your mother was. It does not matter what you lived before. You are relocated. Everything has changed. In Christ, you have a new father. You have a new mother. In Christ, it's not something you pray to have. That's what it is. Once you come into Christ, you have a new father now. So when you are in Christ, you don't talk about ancestral parents. You don't talk about um, family issues. Because that's no longer existent. That's no longer important. It's not just the father you have, Christ himself, here completely. No other thing is possible. No other thing is necessary anymore. Because you have been adopted. So whether your father was, is your father, biological father was alive, is alive, or is not alive, is dead, is not dead, it doesn't matter anymore. You just honor your biological father and give him honor as your biological father. But actually you have relocated. So when they say some things, like, you know, we want to get married and somebody says, I used to tell people, I told somebody recently, so you want to marry, you want to go to the village. I said, why, why go to the village? Are you not a man? I say, marry your child, your child by yourself. Why go to the village? Marry your child out yourself. You know, we just don't know what in Christ means. The man still carries the whole thing to the village and say elders and buy snaps and buy and those one carry snaps and put on the ground and say our ancestor and you are there you say you say you are finished <laughs> you are finished they know how to corner Christians they say leave them won't the child marry don't worry their partner will die they will come home let them come. And they know what to say. What you want to see is what they are going to do. You carry the thing and be praying to the fathers. You kill your fathers. And you are there acknowledging it. Never. Never. I don't do that. God blesses me and have daughters. And you want to take me to the village to, for, for, who, who, who born you? For what? I marry my daughter to you if I want you. I'm the ancestor of this child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the ancestor of this child. I hear I say, oh, Prince, who's Prince? You want to marry or not? Say, I'm marry her here. <laughs> we don't have it. We, 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 in Christ, we have, this is Christ. Amen. <laughs> this, is, this is a father's house. Praise God. Adopted in Christ. Adopted. I now have a new house, a new home, a new, a new pa father, a new mother. And so I stop relating at spiritual level. Relate physical to your physical father. Is that okay? But spiritual, you know what you are doing. You know what you are doing. My father will not allow this. I refuse it. So the glory of the power and the glory of that house fights in your favor. Just like as your father's house fights, this father's house also fights. Because you have been adopted into it. That's what you call adopted. Because you were not born there. You were brought in. You were baptized into the house. So you, it means you have been adopted into the house. Is that not true? 
So you will eat the man has children before. You will now become a brother to the existing children. No difference. You can inherit what the person has. Because you are illegal, right? If you go back to the orphanage, you are an illegal orphan. Yes. If you happen to go back to the orphanage, they will, not, they will ask you, what are you doing here? Your house will come. Say, no, I don't like the house. Ah, ah, but you can't stay here. Oh. If you insist, okay, stay in the corner there. If that's what you like. So people who leave Christ to come out, they are suffering in the corner. Because they came out. Even the people in the orphanage, all the other powers, they are surprised that you are coming to meet them where they are. But you have so relocated. Why are you still here? It means you are an illegal orphan. Any believer who is doing things wrong, they call them lawful captive. <laughs> still lawful. When you say captive, it's lawful. It's not like other captives. It can never be the same like others. If the person chose to just go back to nonsense, it's an, it's, it becomes, a, a, it becomes, a, it becomes uh, what is it now? A lawful captive. The people, the powers holding him, they hold him because he's insisting they should hold him. They have no power to really hold him. They know they are doing what is wrong. They are illegal. When a witch is is oppressing a believer. He knows he's doing something illegal. He knows that he has no jurisdiction over this believer. That's why they cannot possess, they can only oppress by your permission. You came to them. So when they are oppressing, they are oppressing illegally. They are aware that it is an illegal infantry. So they do it without boldness. That's why any small name you mention, they'll break off. Because they already know that they are doing something wrong. Prayed for him. Nobody talked about him. He just said, ah, ah, me, eating with pigs? How? When? How did I get here? Say, ah, ah. So it's not that no all night was done. There is a place for all night. When it comes to oppression, it's not all night. Except you were never in Christ. That's why the issue is that make sure you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, leave the matter. It's not become a legal issue. It's like country to country. And a country misbehave to a citizen of another country in their, their country. It's nations to nation now. South Africans are fighting Nigerians in South Africa. Is that okay? It's not called diplomatic role. 